Hello everybody, this is Madeline from Madeline Diet Designs and welcome back to my channel. Today um, I have a bonus video from the junk journal, um, Christmas junk journal swap with Jessica from Paper Terrace and that is this envelope ephemera holder and I was inspired to make one of these last minute and I included one in her um, box with her journal that I sent her. So anyway, um, real quick, before we get into making it, I just want to show you guys the whole thing. So um, this is the cover. Open it up and I have a belly band here and I have a big pocket here and I have a smaller pocket here, a smaller pocket here, um, another belly band here, a big pocket here, and then this I made into a belly band slash pocket. So you can use it like this or you can just use it like that depending on, you know, the size of your ephemera at the time. And then on the back I have a clear adhesive pocket for a little bit more ephemera storage on the back, okay? So this is a great flat item um, made out of basic supplies and I'm gonna show you guys how I did this today. So to start out, um, the main reason why I thought that I wanted to try this is because I was in Hobby Lobby and I found these paper pads and I just thought they were so cute and they were $9.99 each with 50% off and you get 60 sheets, which I thought, wow, that's a really good deal, you know, for scrapbook paper. So I went ahead and purchased these. Well, when I got home, the sheets are eight and a half by 11. When I got home and I started looking through the pages, this, the designs are so cute, but they're all facing this way like north south and not east west well being a journal maker you know i like pages that i can you know fold in half right to put into a journal and so i thought well this is going to be very weird and you know not correct directionally um if i start you know folding these as pages for junk journals so i had a huge stack of envelopes that I had picked up at a rummage sale with some um, vintage Christmas cards. And I thought, you know, this would make a really great envelope journal. And then I kind of turned that idea into the ephemera holder. So it could really be either way. So let me move these paper pads out of the way. Okay, and we will get started on first constructing um, the actual base for your um, journal or ephemera holder. So I have three envelopes and let me get you guys a measurement. These are, let's see here, oh, about eight and I don't know, nine, eight and eight and three fourths or so by, let's see here, five and two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So maybe that's it. So maybe it is, I'm so sorry y'all. Okay, so it's nine, so it's gonna be eight, and 13 sixteenths by, wow, um, I am not this precise about anything, five and 15 sixteenths. Woo, that was way harder than it should have been. Um, so I take my three envelopes and I first I start out by folding the flaps back. Okay, like this fold them back okay and then I start with my first two facing each other with the flap side facing up okay so the back side of the envelope up and what I do is I take a little bit of my glue stick because it gives me a little wiggle room and I put a little glue right there okay 
flip it over. Okay, so now I've got the front and you slide it in like that and line it up and I fold it over and give it a good press. Okay, so we'll do that one more time with the last envelope. I start with my envelope facing up. I take my glue stick, put a little run of glue stick right here. Then I flip it over like this. I put it in and flip it over, give it a good press. And since you have a little bit of wiggle room with the glue stick, I just kind of line it all up, make sure I like how it's laying. And then you have this extra flap in the back. Well, again, I just take my glue stick like that. And then I fold it over and press it down like that. So that is the basic base outline for your ephemera holder, right? Well, I have already gone ahead and made this one and I've inked it up on the outsides. All right, so I've already got this one made up and inked around. And so then I go through and choose my papers that I wanna use. And um, I went through and decided that I like the way. Oh, and you're gonna need six different kinds of paper. So I decided I like the way these looked, all right? And these all have a measurement of eight and three fourths by five and three fourths. So I'm gonna do the last one with you guys. Let me get out my paper trimmer, okay? And we're going to go eight and three fourths this way, okay? By five and three fourths this way, okay? And then you do want to hang on to the parts that get cut off because we will be using those later on. And so I've hung on to the other ones from the other pieces I've already done. Okay. So now I'm going to take my vintage photo distress oxide and I'm going to just distress around the edges. And you do not, this is not, you don't have to do this part, but I just personally like the way it looks. Um, so, all right. So now we have our envelope base and we have our six pieces of paper. So now um, I'm gonna look at my pieces, which are all cut to size and decide where I want them to go in my journal. So I think that I want to have this be my cover. So I'm just gonna lay this here, all right. And then I'm going to open it up and let's see, maybe do a tree on the inside here and maybe do, yeah, we'll do the stars over here. And then on the next page, we will do, I think, the Santas and the Christmas lights. Which I guess it really doesn't matter which way that goes, but I just love that paper. And then I think we'll do these trees on the back. So now we are going to start to glue these down. And I can see that this is a little bit too tall for my liking. So I'm going to actually trim this down a little bit. And um, as you guys know, um, I'm just going to give it, I'm not even going to really measure, I'm just going to give it a little trim. Um, envelopes are really never an exact size if you've worked with envelopes. Um, you know, they're always off a little bit for the most part, um, or I found it to be that way. And so, um, you might, as you go along, have to do this exact thing and just give it a trim. Okay, so that is, looks great to me. I have a magazine that I use for, you know, my gluing, my glue book or whatever. And so I'm gonna take glue stick and go ahead and get around the outside edges and just really 
give this a good coating of glue all the way like this. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to take it and line it up. And just see if I like that. And I have a little wiggle room. I have a little time for wiggle. So I'm going to pull this over just a touch. Okay, great. That's good. I'm going to get this bubble out. And now I have my bone folder here. And I'm just going to give that a good press with my bone folder. And it's not perfect. It's not perfectly straight. But we are not going for perfection here. This is a handmade item. And so you always need to, in my opinion, give yourself a little bit of grace and not get too worried about it. Because once we decorate it and do everything else, no one's ever going to notice. And so right now, as you can see, I'm just checking my corners to make sure that they got glued down really well. And I'm okay with that. So that's great. So now we're going to move to the inside here. So, as we move on to the inside, um, you can see that right here, I have got this still a little bit tall. And also, right here, I want to be able to keep this pocket. Okay, so I'm going to just make a little mark on this right here. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here because I've got to take some off this, a little bit more off of this one here. And I'm just going to make a little mark here where I think I want to take that off. Okay. I'm going to go over here to my paper trimmer and just give that a cut like that and like that. Okay. And I'm going to go with my, go in with my ink and just give it um, a little bit on the edges where I trimmed. And then again, I'm going to go over here to my glue magazine and get the glue on there. And you can really use any kind of glue that works best for you, that you like using. You know, I have like 500 different types of glue. If you've ever seen my videos, um, you'll, you, you'll know that I do. And um, I think, you know, part of the reason for that is I live in the south, the south, the southern part of the states. And um, it's really humid down here. Even a lot of times in the winter, we still have a good bit of humidity. And I just think that some glues do better in the area where I work than, I mean, live, not work rather, um, than others. But that's just my own conclusion. Okay, so now I'm gonna give that a good press. Let me check my corners over there. Let me get up here a little bit. Okay. So that looks good. Now I'm going to go in with my Distress Oxide and just kind of roughly give this, you know, ink this up here like that. Okay. And I'm going to go in and do the pocket. Now, um, as you can see, I'm going through all the steps, even the little steps. So. Um, you might want to grab a coffee or, you know, a tea or whatever you drink and, um, or fast forward because obviously, although I tried to get a head start on getting some of the things finished for this, <laughs> uh, it is not really, I'm still having to make adjustments along the way and you guys, that is real life, you know? you get crafting, you know, 
You just kind of sometimes have to get yourself a drink and some music or whatever and just kind of go with it, you know? Because this is definitely not an exact, exact science. I keep saying that over and over again. And just hope that, you know, you guys are maybe inspired to create one of these for your own to use and make a great gift. I mean, you could easily stitch some pages in it and just have like pockets and a little journal. I mean, it's just really um, such a versatile thing to make. And story time, I actually was inspired to start junk journaling in the first place by watching um, Jessica from Paper Terrace do an, a Christmas envelope journal. I just remembered that as I'm doing this, y'all. And now all these years later, I'm still at it. Okay, so you can see here that this is a little bit short here, but don't worry about that because we are gonna fix that in just a second. Okay, let me give this a little thinking there. Perfect. Okay, so now, same thing. We're gonna put our Santa on this page. So I'm just gonna make a little mark right here. And if you guys can see, that's where the envelope. And it looks like I'm okay in the length on this one. So let me just trim off an edge here. Okay. Go back and again do a little inking. All right, and then it's time to glue. So I am filming this on December 1st. Um, I probably will put this up on December 1st. So happy December, everybody. Um, I cannot believe December is here. Seems like I have been at Christmas crafting and thinking about Christmas for a lot, a long time, but it's here. So I'm excited. My kids have got about two weeks of school left before they're out for the holiday. So that's fun. We are still getting our Christmas decorations up. We went and bought a tree this week. We always get a live tree from this sweet family who has a tree farm in Michigan and drives to central Alabama and sells Christmas trees every single year. It's just, um, we just always love going there. They have a big blow up Santa in the parking lot. If you're from this area, I'm sure you know where I'm talking about. But anyway, and um, so we went and picked out a tree like we usually do. And um, I'm sure you guys, if you've watched any of my videos, um, I have mentioned that we have a new puppy, uh, Uma Rose, our, um, her mama, Pippa, our other Brock Fonse, let me trim that a little bit off on the bottom, had a litter of puppies this summer and we kept Uma. And she's only like four months old. She's still a baby, y'all. And um, a hot mess. She is so funny. I love her. She is just a hot mess. And she's into any everything. And I just, she's just so funny. I just love her. So we decided that we were going to do a uh, smaller tree this year and put it on our dining room table just to prevent Uma from feeling like, compelled to <laughs> go in and help herself to ornaments or gifts or unwrapping gifts or doing anything like that. So we have, <laughs> I have taken my dining room table and taken everything off it and now there is a live tree and a tree stand. So we just have to put some lights, ornaments, and finish decorating and then we'll put little gifts under the tree on the table and hopefully they will be out of is reach. Okay, perfect. 
And now we're to the back. And we're going to do this one on the back. And let me look. I mean, y'all, that just fits. But I'm going to go ahead and trim a little bit off. Just a little bit off the bottom because I like to have a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, great. Let me do this. Um, actually, y'all, she, uh... <laughs> Last night, and my husband stopped at the grocery store um, to get some bread and whatnot on the way home. And he bought two loaves. We really like this bread um, that the bakery makes at the grocery store up our street. He got two loaves of it because, well, I have a teenage son, but my daughter brings a sandwich and her lunch to school every day. And I can hear him yelling for my son son is 15 and if you've ever had a brother or a son you know that they love to eat and I can hear him yelling for my son asking him if he'd eaten a whole <laughs> loaf of the bread um no it wasn't my son it was in fact Uma Rose okay I'm gonna put a pin in that story I've got this on here and I'm lifting this up right here okay and this is the time where I'm going to add a closure. Again, this is completely optional. So I have this, I don't know, I wouldn't call it ribbon, but it's definitely trim. And I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and trim it here. It's really, really cool. I mean, I got this, again, at a thrift store or a rummage sale. I mean, $1.83 from Walmart from 12 feet. I mean... It's cute. That's a lot of ribbon for $1.83. I don't know how old it is. So I'm going to um, grab my stronger glue, my glitter glue. And if you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to go in here and just put some glue here. Like this really, really strong glue. And I'm going to take my end and I'm going to put it in here. And I mean, that's already, this glue is so good, it's already sticking right to it. And then, since I had to peel that up, I'm just going to take a little bit of my art glitter glue and put a little on top and just go down the edge here just to make sure that, you know, all that is really nice and secure around where I have that closure. So, I'm going to give that a good press with my bone folder. Okay. And let that sit just a second. This glue is so great because it dries fast, but for me, sometimes I don't want my glue to dry too fast because I like to have a little time to inch things around if I need it. But in this case, it's great. Okay, so I have that on there. And then when you go to close it, you're just gonna close it right like that. And um, I'd like to take and put a knot right here in the end of it, uh, just in case it frays, which I don't know that it will, but, and then you close it like that. All right, guys. So, easy enough, right? So, now, I don't think we're going to need our glue bag anymore. So, let me get that out of the way. Um, we are going to take some book corners and add some book corners to our journal ephemera holder. Again, totally optional. I just liked the way it looked and also as you can see this has got some gold foiling. I have gold foiling on my trim there and I have these gold book corners and I thought well that would just look really nice and then give it of course an extra level of durability. So I'm going to take my art glitter glue and I just like to start out and put a little bit on the corners at the top and the bottom, okay? And then I will put my corner here, turn it over and make sure I've got that, yep, all tucked in in the back. And then I'm gonna take my book corner for up here, put it here. This also will help hold the corners in of these two corners, okay? And then with these, I just press them. Now, if you had a pair of pliers, you could use pliers, but um, with these, I find that they're easy enough to press. And sometimes for me with the pliers, I put a dent that I don't like in my book corner. And so um, I just like to use 
you know, my fingers and press it. But of course, you're always welcome to use, um, you know, your pliers. You just got to do whatever is easy for you. Okay, great. So there that is. And I'm going to give let that dry and go ahead and put them on the back. So again, I'm just going to take my art glitter glue like this. And put it on the corner here. Whoops. Whoops, where'd you go? Stuck to my fingers. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to take this one and put it on over there. Check the back. And then I'm just going to give this a little pinch. Okay, nice. Wipe my extra glue off. Then give this corner a little pinch. And wipe the extra glue off like so. Okay, nice. All right. Awesome. Okay, very good. So, we've got that finished. I'm going to put the lid on my art glitter glue real fast. And then we are going to get out our scraps, our offcuts from measuring out our initial pages to cover the envelopes. So at this point, we will I will work on the cover last. Um, I'm going to open this up. And I like to do um, a belly band on this page. And on this page, I like to do two pockets. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and kind of make a pile of, you know, what direction I have. So um, this can go either way, and that can go either way, and that can go either way, either way. This is up and down. And that way, um, you know, I'm always looking at what's directional when I'm trying to make my pockets, because that's just what I like to do. And then I'm just going to look and see what I have here and decide what I want to use. Well, I'm going to save this one for another page because I like there to be some contrast. Um, I think I want to use the Santa here. And I think I want to use either that or that right there. I'm going to go with the hound's tooth. Okay. And then over here, my belly band. Ooh, I'm going to use... I'm going to use this big, this tree here. Okay, nice. All right, y'all, let me grab a sip of my coffee. Okay. So now I'm going to take my pencil. And I'm just going to put a little mark where I'm going to trim this. Same down here. I'm just going to take a little mark where I'm going to trim this. Okay. And then I'm going to get out my paper trimmer again. And a lot of times I don't use a paper trimmer, but for this, I really do like to be um, specific and because I just think it looks really crisp and nice against the other, you know, sharp edges. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then... I am going to take my um, circle punch, and if you don't have a circle punch, you can certainly make a notch or whatever. Um, because it's a pocket, I like to do this, and so I'm just going to stack these up on each other so I can get them even and just give it a little bit of a ooh, punch. Like popped out of there, didn't it? Okay. I'm going to take my ink now and just ink up my edges real fast and then I'm going to glue them down and we're going to have our pockets. So anyway, yeah, Uma jumped up and stole a tire loaf of bread <laughs> from the counter in the kitchen and ate it. And I'm sure my other two dogs, Pippa and Bo, enjoyed helping her with that. So, um, needless to say, even since last night when she discovered that she could do that, um, she has not been shy about taking things she's wanted. So, I think for a little while, we are just going to have to 
um, put things away really good because she is just, you know, testing her limits right now, but she is a scream, man. She is so funny, so funny. Okay, I'm just gonna line this up down there. Give this a good press. And um, this is just a dry baby wipe. This is a tip I actually picked out from, picked up from Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. So sometimes I just have like unscented baby wipes and I'll just leave one out every so often overnight. And then you've got a dry baby wipe to help, you know, take your extra glue up, mop your extra glue up, whoops. And then I think I'm gonna put this guy about here on my page. Um, as you guys can tell, I love hound's tooth. Um, I live in Alabama and I am a University of Alabama fan. My husband actually graduated from the University of Alabama. So I love everything hound's tooth. And so when I saw this paper pad, I just had to grab it. Okay, now I'm going to give this um, a trim, like maybe approximately cut it in half because it's a little too wide for my liking for a belly band. Um, and then I'm going to give it a teeny tiny little trim to cut a little bit off the end. Um, so my daughter is in middle school and she is taking French. For the, um, this is the first year, she has been able to take French as a language. And I actually took a lot of French when I was in high school and college, like six years total. And I know enough French to get by and, you know, obviously, you know, her name. He's got French and I just really enjoy the language of the culture. I just think it's beautiful. But anyway. I also love the South, <laughs> okay, of the United States, rather. Okay, so now I'm just going to give a little glue there and a little bit of glue here. So, in French, she has got a French pen pal, and they are doing a little goodie exchange for the holidays, and she wanted to send her pen pal in France, something from the University of Alabama, which I thought was so cute. So, okay, I'm real happy with this. I'm gonna turn the page. Great. All right, um, put a pin in that story. So we're gonna do another belly band right here and um, two more pockets. But on this side, I like to do a, like a belly band pocket where it can go through this way. So over here, um, let's see. You know what? I think I might use this. Ooh, I do like that. Okay, I'm going to use this one for my belly band over here. Let me trim it in half. Um, anyway, so we went and got her pen pal a hat. University of Alabama hat. And then also, funnily enough, which I didn't realize, but when I think about it, it's true. Um, apparently in France, there are no candies that have peanut butter in them. So she got her French pen pal an enormous bag of Reese's peanut butter cups of the little bitty ones. <laughs> and when I say enormous, like a Halloween size bag, it was huge. Um, so she is so excited to send. And then I think she's sending her some American currency, some coins, a dollar bills and things like that. Okay, so now we're just gonna, that actually is the perfect length. We didn't even need to trim that. So we're just gonna put that on there. All right, and now we're gonna do two more pockets. So let me see what we have for pocket options. I don't want to, I could do that. And let's see, I'm gonna put these over here. So I think maybe we'll use, let's do the two trees. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Okay. Let's mark. I think we're going to put this one down here. Like that down here. So this is going to be our belly band up here. Um, and I am excited to see what she receives from her French pen pal. So 
so that will be fun. And I mean, of course, as you guys know, I love crafting with French ephemera and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. And actually, next year, this is fun. She is, um, of course, I'm going to chaperone. I think they're going to Montreal, Montreal on a field trip. So, we are going to start saving up now to go to Montreal on a French field trip. All right. So, I'm going to use this one down here, you guys. And let me just give it a little match. Like so. Just eyeball it. Okay, let me ink this up. Okay, a little glue here. Um, so, speaking of Michigan, which is, you know, the family where we get our Christmas tree from, the drives down from Michigan with their trees from their tree farm. Um, I don't know if you guys are football fans, but I like college football being from Alabama. Um, I do like some pro football, but I really do love um, college. I like to watch Jalen Hurts play for the Eagles, but... Anyway, over Thanksgiving, I don't know if any of you guys saw the Ohio State-Michigan game. It was really, really good. And I was excited Michigan won. And then, of course, the Alabama-Auburn game, which was insane. And we actually watched that with Robert's brother, who went to Auburn. So, that's always a fun game to watch with him and his family. It was insane. Okay, so I'm going to put this about right here. And again, this is just, you know, in case we have some extra tall ephemera, we can tuck it behind that if need be. But it's also a great tuck spot for your, you know, your short ephemera pieces. You know, I just like to keep this as versatile as possible. Get rid of that pencil mark and give it a little bit more ink. Okay, here we go. And speaking of which, I will ink up the edges. So, anyway, um, yeah, there was some good football on over Thanksgiving. So, next, we have got the SEC Championship, which we are excited about. And I think it's Alabama, Georgia. So, that will be very fun to watch. Okay, y'all. Loving it. Looking so cute. Okay. Awesome. Okay, now, I happen to have some clear adhesive pockets. I just get these off of um, Amazon, and I am going to take one of my clear adhesive pockets, and I'm just going to pop it here on the back. Try to center it as best as I can. Okay, and give that a good press. So cute. And that's just really an extra space to, you know, store some ephemera. All right, y'all. This is good. This is good. Okay, so now um, what I like to do is um, decorate the front. And I've got some Tim Holtz. I've got these cute word stickers here. And I have a little bit of Tim Holtz ephemera left from all my other Christmas projects. So we will just take a look at this and see what we can do for something cute on um, the front cover. All right, which this is a really fun background, I think, to um, start doing um, to find something to go on. Because everything, I mean, y'all, everything just seems to pop off of that. So cute. Okay, and this is cute. I love poinsettias. That is very cute. Um, that's very cute. Look at that. Maybe we can do like some kind of cute little cluster. Let's see what else I got in here. Um, oh, that's cute. I like that. I do like to put a label, um, labels throughout. I just think labels are good for, you know, dates, initials, um, whatnot, you know. A little journaling. Oh, those are cute. Um, this is honestly the part where I feel, always feel the most indecisive 
Um, I mean, I could sit here forever and just kind of go back and forth, but I'm not going to do that today because <laughs> um, we are going to pick some stuff out and move along. Oh, that looks cute together. I do like that, but there's really not a lot of blue, so maybe I'll save that for another project. Um, let's maybe do, this is cute, this cornucopia, or, oh, you know what else is cute? It's this little guy here. That would be cute, although he's not really quite wide enough to me. All right, we're going to get back to the original. I just think that looks the nicest. I do like that. Okay, and then let's see. We've got a wreath. Um, a lot of times in my thought process, and everybody's different, um, but if I've got words, I try to find something that's got maybe numbers on it. Um, when I'm creating a cluster, I also like to try to find things that are different shapes that kind of, um, kind of coordinate with each other. Um, so some things like that are always cute. Uh, this little ticket, that's cute. And let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, that's cute too. Look at that. That's kind of cute. That kind of works with the, the, it's got numbers, which I like to add in some numbers and stuff. Okay, so this is kind of starting to look clustery. Um, and then let's find a nice, maybe red, cute. Okay, so I think we can make something work with those elements in one way or another. Um, you guys, it is the rainiest day here today. We have not had a ton of rain where I live lately, and it is just rainy and cold outside. Okay, this is looking kind of cute. Okay, so I also have off to the side here a huge bag of scraps. I've got all kinds of Christmas scraps left over from my projects, and I always like to keep a bag of scraps around because it's easy to pull if you're making a cluster or doing some um, decorating, you know, just to go in and grab out some elements, you know. So, this is some cute stuff here. I really like this candy cane fabric. Let me see if I can rip a good piece of this up. Off rather, to get that frayed edge. I love a frayed edge. And I'm gonna try not to overthink this too much because that is one great thing about cluster making is that, to me, they always come out better and more authentic the less you over, um, think them. All right, so let me just pull some of these threads out. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. That's cute. All right, so I think maybe um, we will go ahead and just lay that down. Some art glitter glue. So are you guys finished with your Christmas crafting? Are there things you're still working on? I still have, I feel like I'm never finished. I just want to Christmas craft all the time. Lots and lots of things that I want to do. Um, so anyway, and now I'm just going to take this and ink this up around the edges to finish decorating our cover like so. And I just love the way that this holly looks with the holly in that fabric. Okay, that's super cute. Um, I may just center that right there and then build some layers around it. Can you guys hear that um, fire truck in the background? I've got my window open because um, I like the fresh air and I do like to hear it rain. I think it's really relaxing, but buddy that is a loud siren okay so i think up here in the corner we could do that and then maybe down here do let's see here something like this or we can put i almost think that's too much green i kind of like 
the different, I don't know, that looks kind of cute. Okay, here, let me give this a little ink and put this down. Okay. Okay, and let me give this another, um, let me give this a little glue right here. Okay. Oh, super cute. I love the way this is coming together. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, fine. Um, and then let's see, maybe we'll use a little lace down here with this one to layer up. Although, you know, that doesn't really stand out too well. So I don't love that, but maybe we'll do a little piece of lace ribbon right here. Whoops. And I wonder if I have a little bit of a smaller tag in my pile of Tim Holtz goodness. I do right here. Whoops. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. What do you guys think? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Y'all come through the camera. Tell me what you think. <laughs> um. Okay. Actually, you know what? I have an idea. Let's glue this down here. Okay. Cute. Okay. And I wish I had a teeny a tiny red, but we're just going to go with green because that's what I have right here. And it's going to look great because we're not overthinking this, right? <laughs> We are not. Okay. Um, I think maybe to finish this off, it may not work, but we're just going to try it. Why not? We'll do a little bow here in the corner. Okay. And maybe just put a little kind of, um, you know, cute little lacy red bow right here. Okay. Oh, that's cute. It's cute. What do y'all think? Okay. Let's see here. If I can make this look a little bit more. Okay. Madeline, don't overthink. You guys talk to yourself while you're crafting. Somebody told me once the most intelligent people talk to themselves. So, you guys all talk to yourself. Very intelligent, right? <laughs> Oh, I do love that. Okay, that's cute. All right, that's cute. All right, we're going to stop. We're going to hold. We're going to hold with that. All right, so this is our cover. Oh, although, you know what? It would be super cute. Oh, is that too much? No, we're going to go for it. Mm -mm, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. I'll just give it a little ink. Ooh, that is so cute. We're going for it. So fun. Okay. Okay. Um, so cute. So stinking cute. I uh, love it. That bounces perfectly right there. Okay. Love it. All right. Now I'm done. All right. We're going to leave this alone and um, we are going to go ahead and open up and let's just go through and add a few little decorations on the inside before we call it done. Okay. So let me go back to my pile of goodies I have and see what, oh, y'all, oh, that is so cute. That's gonna go there. Okay. Okay, cute, cute, cute. Yeah, love that there. Okay, adorable. And then, let's see, what am I gonna put down here? I tell you what though, we have got to finish this guy off because this video is already, woo, it's getting to be a little long, isn't it? All right, we're gonna get her done. We are gonna get her finished off and she is gonna be so cute. All right. Let's see, what do we have in here? Maybe we'll do, Let's see, I think something cute like 
this would be so cute like fa la la maybe right there i don't know i love that okay that's cute we're gonna do that and then where is that teeny tiny little yep we're gonna put a little leg with it okay cute 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 okay love that so cute Okay, now we need something down here. What are we gonna put down? Oh, this is cute, we'll do this. What about holiday? Oh, that's so cute, I do love that. Let's do that, maybe. And maybe something else with it, like, no, not that. Maybe, that's cute, let's layer that. Okay, we're gonna do that. Give it a little ink. All right, let's go to the next page and do some decorating here. I want to do, let's see, this has got snowflakes. How about, I like this. Let's do the stars are brightly shining. That is super cute here. And then maybe a green sentiment. Oh, I forgot I had these. Oh, these are cute. Let's use one of these right here that one oh my goodness y'all this is so perfect so cute okay let's do this right here you know just eyeballing this like we do um so cute i cannot and maybe we will put like a little ticket or something in the middle um a wreath let's see some holly Okay, what do you guys like the most? Um, best Christmas wishes. I don't love that. Poinsettia. Mm, I don't love that. Let's see. Oh, this is cute. Let's do. Let's do that little stamp. I do like that. All right. Let's give it a little ink. Okay, cute, love that. We're just gonna eyeball it. Um, so cute, okay, love it, love it, love it. All right, and let's see, what are we gonna do up here? I think it would be fun to do another sentiment, but maybe in green. So we have the stars are brightly shining down there, and maybe up here we can do, oh, this is cute, may your days be merry and bright. I do like that one, all right. Okay, um, cute, love it, so cute. Okay, so that page is all decorated and now we're gonna go to the back and I am gonna put a little decoration back here just because I like to. And I think it's a good way just to finish off the look of the whole. Oh, that's cute. We could do believe in a tag. Um, Let's see. I think I like that believe with that little tag right there. So I think we're gonna hold. Oh cute. Maybe we'll put this behind. That's cute too. Yeah, that's it, people. That is it, my friends. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up as I'm <laughs> gluing this down. <laughs> I'm sure this video is already way too long for most of you. So if you've hung on here to the end, I really appreciate it. And um, I really enjoyed making this ephemera folder with you guys today. Um, I'm hoping to come on and do some more um, Christmas ephemera and maybe do a video or two about making some additional Christmas ephemera that we can um, stuff in this folder because that would be fun, I think. So, um, hopefully this week I will get around to doing that because I really would love to. But you guys, take care of yourselves out there. Be safe. 
and again as I say in every video have a merry merry Christmas bye